For the first time, humanity has ventured so far into space. The pilot must be thrilled with this record. Warning. Signs of a panic attack detected. From Earth, space always seems so fascinating and captivating. But out there, at an incredible distance from home, existential terror awaits humanity. Astrophobia. Back in the 70s, astronomers noticed that the universe contains vast regions inexplicably devoid of galaxies. These are voids of unimaginable proportions. The Bootes Void spans a whopping 330 million light years in diameter. There should be at least 2,000 galaxies here. However, only 60 have been detected. So, here you'll dive into the most isolated vacuum in the universe. Even on a spaceship traveling at the speed of light, you'll never escape the Bootes Void. The expansion of the universe itself keeps hurling you back into this unfathomable cosmic swamp. Yet, compared to this, the Eridanus Supervoid feels like an ocean. Here, in a spherical space about 2 billion light-years in diameter, there's plenty of room for 20,000 galaxies, but instead, it's filled with nothing. Some scientists believe it might actually be a gigantic black hole formed in the first moments after the Big Bang. If you fall into it, you'll find yourself in complete darkness. But what you should really fear isn't the destructive gravity, but something even worse. With a black hole this size, you'd be traveling towards the singularity at the center for billions of years. So eventually, only your ashes will arrive. But even when there is plenty of matter around, space doesn't get any less terrifying. In the NGC 1333 Nebula, amidst clouds of dust and gas, new stars are forming. But if you fly too close, this unearthly beauty will inevitably fry you with streams of hot gas. And the thermonuclear reaction in the densest part of the nebula won't even leave your charred bones. But what about the hundreds of exoplanets just waiting for us to visit? Believe it or not, most of them aren't downright terrifying. Kepler-10b might remind you of Mercury at first glance, because it orbits extremely close to its sun-like star, even too close. That's why oceans of molten iron dominate here, with temperatures almost reaching 1,400 degrees Celsius. It's like a giant cauldron for sinners. If hell exists, it's definitely here. But you wouldn't even make it there. Powerful, convective currents from the heat would atomize you miles away from the surface. Kelt 9b takes it up a notch even from that hellish scene. It's a real mutant planet, twice the size of Jupiter. Its super hot star heats its daylight side to a scorching 4,300 degrees Celsius. That's hotter than most of the universe's red dwarf stars. But if you think you'd be safer on the dark side of Kelt 9b, think again. Winds speeding up to 60 kilometers per second will blow you right back into the fiery hell. Even before that, local clouds of ionized iron and titanium atoms will shred even the toughest spacesuit, and you'll cook inside it in your own juices. The gas giant in the AU Microscopy system seems much calmer, until that is, you turn on the Geiger counter. The young star has saturated space around this exoplanet with highly radioactive clouds, and you won't find refuge even in the dense atmosphere of AU Microscopy B is it has already absorbed millions of tons of radioactive dust and resembles a molten Chernobyl reactor. Even a shielded probe wouldn't survive here, let alone an astronaut. But even our own solar system isn't free from such reserves of astrophobia. 
Saturn looks mind-blowing with its striking rings when viewed from a distance. But if you were there right now, all you'd see is an endless, bottomless ocean of toxic gases. And the real kicker will be fragments of Saturn's rings constantly raining down on your head. Their friction against the atmosphere generates storms with lightning hundreds of times more powerful than on Earth. But the real monster is Saturn's closest neighbor. Just think about it. Jupiter could fit 1,300 Earths inside it. Flying around its equator on a hypersonic aircraft would take almost 45 hours. And when you run out of fuel, don't even dream about landing because Jupiter has no solid surface. As you plunge into the planet's depths, you'll face endless storms akin to nuclear explosions. Eventually, your journey from the icy clouds will slowly and subtly turn into a dive into a searing swamp of hydrogen and helium. Your body will instantly be crushed under these conditions, like by a hydraulic press. And that's not all. The Great Red Spot isn't just a decoration on Jupiter's southern hemisphere. It's a deadly storm raging for several hundred years. It's so massive that it could easily swallow Earth whole. Yet, Jupiter isn't the only giant in these parts. Its moon Ganymede is even larger than the planet Mercury and is the only moon in the solar system with an active magnetosphere. It sounds like snippets of aliens plotting an attack on Earth. Beneath Ganymede's ice, four subterranean oceans lie hidden, where, as astrobiologists believe, bizarre forms of life may dwell in eternal darkness. Imagine a jelly made of plankton-like creatures slowly digesting you along with your spacesuit. Down in the darkest depths, crustacean-like creatures similar to Earth's brine shrimp might thrive. But on Ganymede, they'd be giant monsters due to its low gravity. However, even that's not the craziest world in the solar system. Neptune's moon, Triton, is covered in strange fissures and scars. But what could have caused them at a temperature below minus 235 degrees Celsius? These are enigmatic black geysers so powerful that they shoot straight into space. And if you really want to personally investigate them, your invaluable scientific data will travel back to Earth more than four hours, even at the speed of light. Because Triton is that far away from Earth. To find it, just look for that lonely pale star in the sky, aka the Sun. However, you'll never see it up close again because the journey back from Triton to Earth with current technology would take over 25 years. However, in space, there's a slew of bizarre stars to fear even while standing safely on Earth. In 2020, astronomers identified a neutron star with an abnormally strong magnetic field. It's a trillion times more powerful than Earth's. If you try getting closer to a magnetar about 300 kilometers away, you'll instantly pass out. Your nervous system will simply shut down from the magnetic overload. In 2004, scientists recorded a magnetar burst that literally made Earth's magnetic field shudder. And this giant star in its death throes unleashed a beam on us way stronger than any Death Star weapon. In October of 2022, it hit Earth, bombarding us with harsh gamma radiation for over 10 hours. Luckily, Earth's atmosphere shielded us from this deadly breath of a distant star. But it caused some molecules in the upper layers to split into atoms. But if the next gamma ray burst of this magnitude hits Earth from 10,000 light years away, it'd be like a nuclear war in complete silence. Most life forms would perish, and those who survive would be blasted with harsh radiation from the sun itself, as the burst would also obliterate the ozone layer. Yet. The universe harbors even more exotic sources of deadly rays feared by entire galaxies. 
Quasars are incredibly massive black holes that devour matter so voraciously that they flood everything around them with deadly radiation for millions of light years. In fact, astronomers believe that quasars could have prevented life from ever emerging in the early universe. So we're very lucky that the supermassive black hole Sagittarius A star at the center of our galaxy is not a quasar. However, a collision with the Andromeda galaxy might change that, and we'll witness the ultimate deadly show of cosmic proportions in the sky. Its harsh radiation will even fry bacteria in Earth's crust. But perhaps the scariest thing in space is that right now, beyond our lonely, miraculously surviving Earth, it's completely dead. Black voids, exploding star nurseries, strange exoplanets with extreme phenomena, they all exist for no one and nothing and without any purpose. So what if astrophobia isn't a curse, but our way of giving some sense to the universe out of fear? So are you afraid of space now?